Egunon, sail ofizialeko le weekend filma ikusi dugu, eta orain egingo dugu prentsa horrekoa. Buenos días, vamos a hacer la rueda de prensa correspondiente a la película Le Weekend de la sección oficial. Tenemos para eso con nosotros a su director, Roger Mitchell, tenemos a la actriz y actor Lindsay Duncan y Jim Broadbent, tenemos al guionista Hanif Kureishi y a su productor Kevin Lowder. Y lo que desean es escuchar ya sus preguntas. Así que la primera, por favor, aquí en la primera fila, rápidamente. Aquí en la primera fila. Un micrófono, por favor. Aquí. Eh, sí. Hola, buenos días. Eh, me gustaría hacer una pregunta a los dos actores. Eh, bueno, primero, bienvenidos. Y yo he visto muchísima naturalidad en las interpretaciones. Y bueno, pues me gustaría saber cómo, cómo llegan a ese, a ese punto. Me ha parecido gente perfectamente cercana y, y como digo, muy naturales. Gracias. Um, it just, it all comes from the writing. <laughs> and, and it was, I think we felt we were quite well cast. <laughs> yes, we thought we were the best people for the job. <laughs> And also, it is true that it comes from the script. I mean, like, the characters are there, and the tone of the film um, was relatively easy to achieve because it was a very relaxed working situation. And, um, yeah, we, right. we, it was a very light, very light crew, and we moved around Paris very quickly and very easily. And by and large, it was shot, compared with most films, in story order. The first shot we did in the film was on the train going to Paris, and and the and, it, and almost the last thing we did was the scene in the cafe, wasn't it? So, so and so it, it, it felt like a very organic experience, the whole Parisian journey. I agree. Más preguntas, por favor. Ahí, por favor. Um, why did you portray a character so visibly on the left of the political sc spectrum? Is there a reason for that? Um, Who's that for the writer? That's right. <laughs> <I think. laughs> for whoever it is, I mean, for the, probably for Mr. Kureshi. These were, these were lefties, clearly. Uh, and um, so I was wondering why they were left, why did you choose lefties? Uh, and not say Thatcherites, go figure. Well, I don't know any Thatcherites, I don't think I've ever met a Thatcherite. Um, if I'd met one, I would have put him or her in the film. Um, and many of my friends, indeed Roger is, a, is I guess, a, 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 what you would describe as a lefty. So having spent my, or indeed wasted my life amongst uh, radicals, leftists, Maoists, uh, Trotskyites. It seemed to me that the time was absolutely right to put them in a film. And the bitterness and disillusionment that we've all suffered from seemed to me to be perfect for the contemporary cinema. And there's a lot in the film as well about, well, fairly obviously, about um, a long relationship, a long intimate relationship, and inevitably, you, you start with ideals and hopes, as maybe we all did politically way back in the 60s, and you, you find that you've lost sight of some of those, or you, you know, there's disappointment in, in yourself, in your relationship, and uh, yeah, I think that, so there's a, there's a broader landscape, at the same time as the intimate one of the relationship. Preguntas, por favor. Sí, ahí atrás del todo hay una pregunta. Ahí atrás. Bueno, enhorabuena por la película. La verdad que me ha encantado. Es lo mejor que he visto por ahora. Eh, una pregunta a los dos, a la pareja. Eh, ¿Realmente fue difícil el, en el rodaje para esos, esos diálogos tan, tan guapos que, que habéis hecho? 
Y por cierto, la actriz, yo no me marcharía tan, tan pronto. ¿eh? Good, good. Well, yeah, I mean, I think that is, as we said earlier, that's, that it's the writing. And if you're comfortable with the writing, you believe in it. And, you know, we'd obviously talked it. We've been through the, the screenplay for maybe five short days, haven't we? Before we started shooting. You read it before you started. Read it, yeah. Most of it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, the, 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 the point is, I suppose, to try and feel as um, truthful as you possibly can. I mean, that's, the, that's what you're aiming for. Sí, ahí en la primera fila. Hi, my question is for the director. Um, I was wondering while I was watching the movie if you were using the the couple doing funny things and and they were running around all the time and it was really fun, but at some point it looked kind of depressing because they were trying so hard to get along again and they they didn't they weren't able to do it. And I, I wanted to really, to, to know if you were actually using that or not, or, or if it was just me. Maybe you were just trying to make it fun and, and that was it and the other thing was my impression. No, I think it's the other way around. Um, we were trying to make it miserable and the fun thing is <laughs> all your own uh, <laughs> misconception. I think, I think we were trying to <clears throat> make a portrait of a marriage which includes the light and the dark. And what's particular about this story is that the light and the dark follow upon each other uh, very, very swiftly, as, as, as in a, a real relationship, not, not, not even necessarily a relationship which has lasted 30 years and more. So the idea that within a marriage, as Jeff's character says, you can be angry and loving within five minutes uh, of your partner is very much um, one of the theses uh, of, of the oddness of the behavior that we were trying to depict, so that contrast was intentional, yeah. ¿Hay alguna pregunta más, por favor? Si no, yo mismo, yo mismo voy a preguntar. He escuchado, he escuchado a dos periodistas que comentaban entre ellos que habían visto aquí influencias de, de, Godard, de Godard. Yo no sé si esto es así o si realmente se puede, si el director ha usado esas influencias, por decir así, de, de Godard. No lo preguntan, pero yo les he escuchado. <laughs> well, the, the, the spirit of the new wave infects the film in, in several ways. The new wave would have been uh, the films that our characters watched when they were young, when they were students, when they were full of uh, fighting spirit. And of course, the film references are a film by Godard, The Band Apart, uh, is a film that they catch a a glimpse of in their hotel suite, and the film ends with a, with a sort of um, apologetic, um, affectionate nod towards Godard. So, yes, of course, the film is smothered in uh, Godard. Preguntas, por favor. <coughs> sí, aquí en, en esta fila. Hola, enhorabuena. Eh, quería saber por qué la película se ambienta en París, por qué habéis elegido esa, esa localización para este encuentro entre los dos personajes principales, este reencuentro, digamos. Obviamente, en Inglaterra, un trip a París es mucho más fácil que un trip a San Sebastián o otros romanticos en Europa, porque podemos ir en el tren. And so that's become a very common event for couples to go for a romantic weekend. And obviously Paris is the city of light and is the most famously romantic city in the world. So it's a wonderful counterpoint to the bickering and misery that is endured by this dysfunctional it's couple. It's become almost a cliche, hasn't it, yeah, to represent it has. romance. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where they started. So they have to go back. Hi, 
Uh, I have a question to Mr. Hanif Qureshi, uh, because uh, I think one of the best point of this brilliant movie is the script. So uh, I want to, to ask to Mr. Qureshi about uh, how do you deal with this kind of uh, material? Uh, because everybody knows about your, your uh, literature and your books. I remember one of your first book adapted to the cinema, My Beautiful Laundrette, and was a different <laughs> subject. And I think in this film, a part of brilliant stereotype, because uh, a stereotype could be brilliant too, there is a special sincerity, a special spirit uh, dealing with this uh, generation, with this uh, 60 and 70. Uh, it's not only uh, good dialogues, there is more. There is something uh, deep in my opinion. So can you tell us about your work with the script? Well, I think you're right. It's been a long journey from gay skinheads and in laundrettes to, to white heterosexuals um, in Paris. But I think after Roger and I did, and Kev did the Buddha of Suburbia, we got interested with the mother and also with Venus in, in making films um, and telling stories about older people. Um, it seemed to me there weren't enough films about older people and their lives as our lives it seemed to, uh, seemed to become more interesting as we got older. Um, and most films are about young people, it seems to me, falling in love. So the, uh, most of us live in uh, or have been part of relationships that have gone on for ages. Um, and that seemed much more interesting to me and, and, uh, and to Roger. What, what is it really like to be with someone um, for 20 years? Um, and why would you be with them? And what's going on between the two of you that makes it worthwhile? Um, and then your kids grow up and they leave and you're left with this person and you think, why should I be with this person? What do we have now between us? Should we go and do something else? Or if we can stay together, what would be the reason? And it seemed to me that marriage, you know, is the central subject of uh, uh, certainly of the novel, um, and the central question in Western culture. Um, and the whole idea of marriage has certainly changed during, during my lifetime. When I was a kid, everybody was married, and they just stayed married, and that was that. Um, I was looking at pictures the other day of my 40th birthday party, at which Roger was present. And I looked round the table at all the people there, and not, not one of those couples is still together. Uh, in those photographs. So, uh, uh, we're, we're the only couple. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's only me and Roger, actually, who, who, who are still speaking to one another after all those years. Um, so these questions, you know, why would people be together? Um, what is between them after so long? What are they doing? Seems to me to be really important questions um, that the cinema should address um, and where possible humorously. Buenos días. Uh, hay, hay gente que uh, hay gente que comenta que Jim Broadbent, podi, uh, Jim Broadbent y Lindsay Duncan podían ser el Ethan Hawke y la Juliette del Pi de un futuro Before Midnight o de la continuación de la trilogía de Linklater. No sé qué, qué opinan ustedes de esta, de esta comparación de una futura continuación de la fantástica trilogía de Linklater. Gracias. <laughs> what a good idea. <laughs> we, we, a franchise like Lord morning. of the Rings. Yeah, we we're going, going to do Lost Weekend next, <laughs> uh, which we could possibly do in San Sebastian. Um, Trilogy, whether they'll stay, stay together long enough to long get enough to the third. Okay. <laughs> we certainly had a lovely time making the film, so um, we we'd, we'd be very keen to try and reproduce the <laughs> way we made the film. It was... It was uh, absolute joy of a month in Paris so to do to make a film like that was a was a very uh, intimate and, and as Lindsay said organic experience really 
I haven't seen those Richard Linklater films. Is, it, is, that, is that his name? But other people have mentioned this film in relation to that. I thought of this film as being much more like a sort of Woody Allen film, but with jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Hola, buenos días. Eh, quería preguntar a los dos actores qué es lo que más os atrajo de vuestros personajes y si hay algo de vosotros en ellos. Gracias. Um, I think what attracted to me, attracted me to the whole piece was that there's loads in both the characters that uh, is uh, I identified with. I mean, almost equally as much in. Um, in Meg, I could, I could hear myself saying Meg's lines or I could hear myself saying Nick's lines. There's, there's so much recognition mm. in the whole piece. I think this is, this is so true and so I can I, and sympathize and empathize with yeah. both these characters all the way through. And so it's, when you get that, it's irresistible. You, know, you think it's so rare that you can really identify with a character mm. to, to that extent. And of course, it's even more unusual to be offered a really substantial part for a woman of my age. Uh, you know, and we're going to shoot it in Paris. You could only say yes. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's, it's exactly what Jim says, but, but more for a woman, because it is, it's getting slightly better, but it's still really unusual to be sharing a, a film with a man. But also, <coughs> reading the script, I could, every line of Meg's, I could imagine and hear Lindsay doing it in my head. So, and that was, uh, and we'd worked That's together worried. before. We played a husband and wife on television a few years ago. And so that was, no, or, it was going to be uh, um, fun. <laughs> I knew that, was, that, that <laughs> element was. was going to be delightful, and yeah. it was. <laughs> <clears throat> Any more questions, please? Sí, allí. Question, uh, question for Mr. Loder. Um, first of all, congratulations on the very elegant cameo in the first scene. Uh, but um, is it... You and uh, Roger and Hanif have a track record, obviously, of making films together, uh, but is it easier within the context of the British film industry or whatever to, make, to get films like this made, which clearly aren't going to be broadly multiplex material. Well, yes, I mean, this is the, uh, the fourth project that Hadith and Roger and I have done together. One was television and then the previous two films, The Mother and Venus. I mean, I suppose we're always kind of cooking a project, uh, however slowly. Um, and this film was made very cheaply. I mean, we made this film, uh, as we've already referred to, in a, in a very kind of small crew. We, went, we shot it in 21 days. It cost probably less than 2 million euros, the budget of this film. So we did this film really as a labor of love to some extent. And I think because we were prepared to work in that very small way, um, we found that it wasn't that hard to raise the money, but we obviously got support from Film4, who have made a, a lot of films with us, uh, and from the BFI, um, and from Curzon, who are really known in Britain as a, a distributor as, a, as much as a, um, a financier of the films, but you know, it, it was a very um, neat kind of fit between those parties. I mean, the British film industry at the moment seems to be uh, producing, you know, a lot of very um, interesting and engaging work on, on a variety of scales. So I think we just keep plugging away, doing the work we want to do. And so far, we've been allowed to do it. But, uh, you know, long may it continue. But it feels like every time you're starting a new business and having to kind of go back and start all over again to some extent. But I think we've been lucky. This another question to uh, to Roger Mitchell. And what about the casting of just Jeff Goldblum? Because I think it's absolutely brilliant. Uh, is so I am so happy to see him back uh, yes. at work. Yeah. 
and uh, I, I think <laughs> I think it's it's really uh, the the right man to do this part of this kind of uh, not cynical, but the the, the man that uh, lost illusion and still uh, dreams and uh, uh, imbalance between Europe and United States is absolutely <laughs> different yeah. from other stereotypes. You, you, you quoted <laughs> Woody Allen, but some we've seen countless bad movies about Americans in, uh, in Paris uh, and like this. So it was your first choice or what happened with him? Yes, yeah, so we're hoping that in the sequel it opens with uh, our, our couple meeting Jeff Goldblum, but now he's a drunk. He's been uh, <laughs> kicked, kicked out of his house. Uh, he's uh, living in a cardboard box, a very big cardboard box. Um, Jeff, I did a film with Jeff a couple of years ago um, and got to know him and like him very much. And we ended up sort of writing this for, for Jeff, as you can, as you can probably feel. Um, and he leapt to the chance of coming and making a tiny film in Paris. He was only with us for three days, it felt like weeks. He was, he was such a strong uh, color and flavor, exactly. wasn't he? And he came at the end of our shoot, so he gave us all a big pickup. And he's, 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 he's great fun. He's, he's, everything he does, he does with full enthusiasm. He came to my house because uh, he wanted to get used to little children. He's thinking of having children. So he came with his uh, girlfriend to experiment with little children. He spent three hours putting my four-year-old girl to bed, uh, reading her story after story. So when she grows up, she'll watch Jurassic Park and she'll suddenly <laughs> freak out and go, oh my God, are you frightened of the dinosaur? No, no, who's that guy? Who's that guy? Um, but he's a, he's a really sp special guy. We're all very fond of him. Galderarik bai, más preguntas, por favor. Pues si todo el mundo está satisfecho. Thank you very much. Gracias. Thank